August 23rd, 20... 7.45 p.m. Entry 1. This is Detective John Lindley opening my investigation into the town of Mappus, Illinois, and the alleged atrocities being committed in the town. My investigation came at the request of the ISP when details arose of multiple disappearances of persons across the Midwest, the town itself being at the apparent center of the incidents. I'm beginning my contact with multiple individuals who claim the town is the hub of a massive cult operation that involves cannibalism, murder, and brainwashing. I'm stationed in a small hotel in Flora, Illinois, approximately 35 miles from the town. I'm conducting my first interview within the hour with the researcher, who was the first credible source from within the town.
August 24th, 20... 5.33 p.m. Entry 3. I spoke with a resident of Mappas who sent over paperwork regarding the citizens of the town. A cult member possessing an avatar undergoes notable changes in their physiology. Frequently cited features include a nocturnal sleeping schedule, low body temperature, aversion to sunlight, and trails of black lines running across their skin in the shape of lightning. Unverified reports also claim they possess superhuman abilities such as abnormal strength, teeth and nails as sharp as razor blades, and regenerative capabilities. The strength of the avatar grows while close to the community complex and wanes the longer a member stays away from their community. Their typical habits involve abduction in towns as far away as they can manage, either using persuasion with promises of power or outright abduction. The department has also attributed multiple gruesome murders to citizens of Mappus.
August 25th, 20, 1142 p.m. Entry 5. I arrived at the town from the southern forest, traveling three miles on foot in the woods before discovering a torchlit ceremony being held, approximately a mile from the town itself. As described from a source within the town, this location is known as the Gorge of Frastus, where regular ceremonies are held by the population of the town. According to county records retrieved from earlier investigations, uh, the land is defined as an active strip mine and privately owned by a company known as Andreas LTD. However, during my investigation of the area, I found no signs of mining operations or equipment. The area was heavily populated by individuals cloaked in robes. Several of these individuals threw themselves into a massive hole in the forest, and many others picked luminescent blue flowers that grew scattered around it. I stayed in the place for three hours before the ceremony concluded and the members left the hole. My investigation of the area found no bodies. However, the most concerning aspects were the strange flowers that grew around the hole and the hole itself. It was impossible to see the bottom of it, even as my flashlight shined down into it. There were no sounds coming from it except the echoing swirl of wind around the walls. I'm moving forward into the town itself, hoping to meet with multiple residents who have made contact with my investigation. Thank you. 
August 26th, 20, 128, entry 6, I've arrived in the town itself, I've immediately taken refuge in a small one-story ranch home, I was assaulted by multiple citizens upon stepping foot on the street, however I saw no signs of CCTV on the streets, or around homes in the town. I've contacted outside authorities. They've requested a full-scale lockdown of the city. Whatever is happening here is deadly. The family that lived in this house acted human, but barely loved it. The couple, a husband and wife, easily in their 70s, had the strength of someone in their 20s. I neutralized both of them and have locked down the house. The ISP say they will be arriving within the hour and have alerted county law enforcement.
Outside. It had to be the helicopter. I attempted to contact the ISP again, but cannot make a call. I can see shadows outside as if they're waiting for me to come out. This entry might possibly be my last.
2.45 a.m., entry 8. I've arrived at the municipality building. The massive complex rests at the center of town and is the hub of operations for this cult. I met with my contact, a researcher named Sam Rednar, who has given me a poison that will wipe out the source of the madness cell if injected directly. I'm making my way through the complex dressed in a ceremonial robe, which allows me to move freely without attracting the attention of the citizens.
have gotten past the main gate of the garden. We can reach the middle. Five grows at least ten feet tall in the sand. Get there, but the fog is so thick.
September 2nd, 8.30 a.m. Entry 13. I'm pleased to report the closure of the Mathis investigation with a successful eradication of the mother flower. Soon after it was killed, phones began working and the ISP brought a large-scale force to the town, locking down the town and making mass arrests of city officials, law enforcement, and resisting town members. Many who were stuck behind the will of the avatars were finally able to move their bodies freely again. I'm headed back to Springfield, as the official statement on the Mathis incident was a fertilizer factory explosion due to Adrius LTD. But as I drive, I should explain that the avatar has a bond that cannot be broken. It can't just be extinguished. It can't be washed out by a single detective, a single researcher, or a police force. I've got a meeting at 10 a.m. with the governor, who I'm sure would love to hear the explanation. Following the Mathis incident, the avatars would continue to spread their reach across the USA, eventually reaching other countries. As it spread, many investigations sprang up across the planet regarding similar accounts of massive holes in the ground that seemed to be bottomless, with the same glowing flowers around them. Soon, the avatars made such a deep connection and occupied so many bodies that those that resisted their influence had their bodies turned into a vegetative growth. It quickly became a cultural standard of the world to see them moving through the streets, making low groans. Thousands of years in the future, as the Earth entered an ice age, the vegetation that was once the human race formed together by the billions, creating giant tendrils that pierced the atmosphere and moved through the stars as vessels for the avatars, searching for other planets to inhabit. But the consciousness of billions of humans never died within those vegetative masses. As a collective, they singularly inhabited the avatar peacefully experiencing an unending dream for eons as they powered the Avatar's conquest through the stars.